Hello, golfing dogs and dog golfers out there. This is Grace, who's a little bit tired, unfortunately not from golfing because all the golf courses are closed down in the UK with the latest protocols, but uh, from a number of long walks that we are allowed to do today. She is uh, a bit forlorn, missing her days out on the golf course, and it's given me a chance to just peruse the web and find more information, and I stumbled across a very interesting video by a prominent golf site, golf.com, talking about and promoting golfing with your dog. It was actually set in the U.S., which is a place where golfing with dogs is really quite rare. Uh, it's hard to find courses that support it. So having this sort of high-profile promotion of um, allowing dogs on the course with players, uh, I was very enthusiastic to find. Um, I was going to just share it, and then as I watched through it, I thought, boy, there's a real lot of issues here. I really need to explain. And as I started to go through and write all the clarifications and actual corrections, I thought actually a better format would be to just share the video and comment as it goes along. So that's what I'm going to try to do today. It's the first time I've done what I guess it's called a reaction video. And let's see how we go. And, and hopefully the combination of the video and some of my commentary uh, will be helpful for you as you think about uh, the possibility of either golfing with your dog or looking at your course's policy for allowing dogs to accompany the... So, you want to play golf with your dog. I can't blame you. What could be better than getting your golf in and walking the dog at the same time? Not much. Not much. Yeah. No. This is everything you should know about playing golf with your dog. Okay, so that's a, a pretty big claim. Everything you should know. Golf. Uh, Grace is pretty excited about that. Uh, let's see if they have everything here. First, this is Jersey. Hi, Jersey. She's a 49 pound purebred golden retriever. She shares a birthday with Tiger Woods. That's and like cool Tiger, she loves the golf course. Maybe a little bit too much. Hmm. The first thing you must do is determine whether you're playing in the morning or the evening because chances most courses are not going to allow you to bring a pup out onto the course in the middle of the day when it's packed with people. So okay. <laughs> Very interesting point here. The very first thing that they're saying to do is determine whether to play in the morning or afternoon. Uh, the very first thing to do is to find out, does your course allow dogs? And the irony is that in them not saying this is that they showed the course where this person is playing it. They introduced Jersey, but they're not, there's no credit to the narrator or who did this on golf.com, I did some research, try to find it, couldn't find out who this player was. Um, but it turns out I contacted uh, Cherry Hills Course and Lodge and they do not allow dogs. So I guess uh, this individual kind of snuck onto the course and didn't ask and found at the time when it was particularly empty. But no, the very first thing you do is not determine the time of day. The very first thing you do is determine, does your car course allow dogs? Of course, that's been one of the, the founding objectives of golf um, doggolf.info with its database of 500 courses in the UK. And just recently, last month, I did add a map of courses in the USA that I found after a couple weeks of research. And, and frankly and sadly, I only found about a dozen in the entire USA that supports uh, golfing with your dogs. It doesn't surprise me because I talked to a number of my friends who are golfers in the U.S. and they're surprised that we bring Grace out on the course. They've never heard of that in the U.S. So um, yes, job one, it's fine. Make sure the course you want to play at allows dogs. Get out there early like Jersey and I did. We're the only person on the golf course. Total freedom, all the fairway to run through. The irony is that actually Secondly, put up some wording up. that said fine. You're going to want to keep a leash on your dog for optics canines. reasons at the very least, even if they're running around with the leash on. And it's not hard to make that leash an extension of your golf bag because, as I found out, Jersey had a very early interest in my action at the golf ball. Okay. <laughs> so 
if the number one thing to do is to find out does your course allow dogs, the number two question is what is their protocol? And there are two basic protocols, lead required, and that is not just a putting a lead on the collar and letting the dog run around free. It means that they are on lead and that lead is either attached to you or attached to your golf bag so they do not run freely. There are other courses, uh, in the UK it's about 20% that have um, dog um, under control as the protocol. So a lead is not required, but the dog is required to be under control if they're running around and causing disruption and you clearly don't have command over them, uh, the course can call you up and, and ask you to either control your dog or to not golf with your dog. So um, I like the, the idea of just attaching a lead to make it look good, um, but looking good with the lead is not really enough. It is, um, you really have to have your dog under proper control. Now, if you're getting really serious and you're going to do this a lot, start leaving your bag in the same spot on each tee box. It'll be a little bit of a lesson for where your dog can and cannot roam. I like that idea. That's a, that is a, a pretty good tip. Unfortunately, it only applies to a golfer if you're golfing at the same course all the time. So if you've got a course you belong to, yeah, that's, that could be a pretty good idea. And, and dogs do do good with repetition. Grace is giving her endorsement. The most important question is, is your dog a chaser? Will they assume that you're playing some gigantic, wacky game of fetch with the golf ball? Jersey thought we were playing fetch. If they're not interested in your golf ball, that's awesome. That'll keep them from getting into trouble. This brings us to the tennis ball. Nothing is more important than a tennis ball or a frisbee or whatever can get you a 10 second distraction as you size up and hit your shot. Okay, um, once again, this, this is terrible advice. Ignore this advice. It's not that nothing is more important than getting a 10 minute distraction. The most important thing is that your dog is under control, be it on a leash on a, or on a lead, or they're very well under command and you can tell them to sit and to stay and they will not chase the dog. That is the most important thing. If your dog is a chaser, as this narrator has described, then I would advise that they be on a lead all the time and to stop their chasing with control, not stop their chasing with distraction. The, the, the narrator is basically saying if you can't control your if your dog can't control themselves from chasing the ball, then go ahead and pander to them by distracting them with thrown items. Uh, for starters, players behind you and next to you are not going to be thrilled with you throwing objects around just to distract your dog and taking more time to tee off. Uh, and if your dog is as quick as Grace, she's going to get that ball or frisbee back to you as quick before you can tee up and take your shot. Um, the advice about chasers should read, if you can't if the dog can't control themselves from chasing the ball, then they should be kept on a secure lead during the entire round to prevent them from doing so, period. Use as much of the fairway as you like. Just make sure you throw it far enough where you can get your cuts in and you're not feeling rushed. Jersey and I got into a really good groove here. She even ah, left her ball by a tee box once. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> So a few basics, <laughs> no dogs on the greens, and that is the putting greens and the teeing greens or in the bunkers. So here we have a picture of her going on to a green and, and, and he's applauding her for doing it and leaving the tennis ball there. That's terrible behavior. Do not let your, if you're gonna let your dogs run free, you must train them to not go on the greens or in the bunkers. And if they can't do that, Again, they must be controlled by a lead. The only gunning principle here is walk before you run. 30 minutes of fetch will properly tire out any dog. And by then, you've only really finished three holes of golf. So maybe save the first tennis ball toss for the fifth or the sixth fairway. So he, he's kind of getting at an interesting point here that um, about, you know, if your dog is really excited that they are harder to control, and so you just, I don't agree that you should work them out on the golf course. Either A, 
maybe take his advice and play games of fetch before you go on the golf course to get them settled down. Or B, something we often do with Grace is she gets very excited, especially if we haven't been on the course for a while. And we will keep her, even if it is a course that allows them off lead and under control, we will um, put her on a lead for the first uh, couple of holes until she's tired out just from walking and uh, that settles her down. But again, the objective is get use control, either commands or your lead to control, not throwing balls around. And to make sure that your dog can handle a full nine holes, just know you can never pack enough water or treats. That might seem obvious, but one pro tip I've got for you is to reuse these lemonade mix cartons. That's so it is a good point about water. Uh, we bring lots of water. You, you can find places, especially here in the UK, where there's lots of wa accessible water and water hazards, that the courses have water fountains. So if you do your research ahead of time, you, you may be able to make do with the water that's available on the course. Uh, but it's always safe to have some extra. The lemonade cartons that he's alluding to, I, I don't actually see those in the UK. Lemonade mix is not a, powdered lemonade mix is not a big thing in this country. And it is also an awfully small amount of water and a small little container to drink out of. So I like the principle of the idea, but I'm not sure it, it's the greatest. Work great as a water bottle and a dish to drink out of, and they stash pretty easily into any golf bag. Jersey went through three of these in the first five holes, which is what I get for busting out the tennis ball a little bit too early in our round. And lastly, start them young. Jersey is four years old, going on five. This was her first time at the golf course. And while she learned a lot, you know how the saying goes, it's not ah! easy to teach your old dog new tricks. Jersey went tearing after a chip shot. Okay, so once again, not only is Jersey being a bit poorly behaved, but the owner there threw the ball onto the teeing green, encouraging her to run across the teeing green. Again, no dogs on teeing greens. Um, yes, in anything that you're trying to do with your dog, it is always lovely to get them started early. If you have a puppy, by all means, get them started early. But don't let this advice put you off. Um, having your older dog out on the course. The, if you've got a dog that's under control, being under control will apply as well to, the, uh, to a, golf, a golf course as to anything else they do. And if they're not so under control, just put a lead on them, put a leash on them to control them. The one thing I'd be wary about is if you have a barking dog um, and you don't have control over that, that can be really disruptive on a golf course, and I would really shy away from bringing a dog you can, whose bark you cannot control onto a golf course. But, uh, you know, an advantage to bringing some of the older dogs out if they're under control is uh, they're less animated and lively and want to run around and get overly excited, and, and our experience is that uh, older dogs make some of the best dog golfing companions. To one of the greens, and she left some marks in her path. So bring your pup to the golf course early and often. If you can teach them to sit next to greens and tee boxes and not get too excited about the bunkers, then you've probably- uh, uh, Let's be clear here. It's not just about not get too excited about the bunkers. It's no bunkers whatsoever. Do not let the dogs go into the bunkers. Bunker Dogs should not be in the bunkers, period. If they go into the bunkers, no matter how excited they get, they're not in control, and you're not doing your job to either have them under control or putting them on a lead. Figured out how to play golf with your dog. So um, I, I love the fact that golf.com came up with this, uh, this video. I love the fact that the narrator clearly expressed an enthusiasm and shared the excitement and all the positive benefits of bringing uh, a dog on a golf course, so that's all great. Uh, my only disappointment right. is throughout that they had missed out a few key principles, mostly about being under control. That that's the fundamental uh, requirement. Um, I liked a couple of the tips, and I'd uh, love to have more tips. But I think if you have your dog under control, you're going to have a great time on the golf course with them. And if you're of course considering allowing dogs. 
you, I see a lot of discussion about all these different issues and distractions. Uh, safety, which I've written a few pieces on, is a real red herring. There's dogs really don't present a, a safety issue to golfers, and being on a golf course does not present a safety issue to dogs. Um, it's really about being under control, and once they're under control, you, your dog, and all your golfers around you are going to have a wonderful time with your canine companion. Hope to be on the, courses so on the golf course soon. Stay safe and stay well.